you know, you sell Gucci wallets or Xenia suits, uh, and should you be investing in today's luxury companies? Well, Juan Mendoza is here to make this case. He runs the luxury goods portfolio at Clarendon Lou, which is a private bank owned by Credit Suisse, and he says, in fact, that's the oldest luxury equity fund on the market today. Nice to see you. I welcome uh, to Hong Kong, since you're here for the Credit Suisse conference. Let me just ask you about Good morning, performance. Sue. Good morning to you. Uh, year to date, you're up 13%, is that right? Something along those lines? Yes, around 13.8%. Yeah, and what's, uh, that's pretty good considering we're seeing markets really going sideways uh, for yeah. this year. So what's the strategy this year for 2010? It's a little bit harder to make money. Well, you know, I think that in the luxury space, a lot of people were surprised about 2009. Uh, most of the leading companies uh, surprised uh, in last uh, Christmas, not only showing very strong momentum in China and in Asia, but also showing really uh, signs of life in the US. And this is continuing. We are, have now the Basel World Fair in Switzerland where we have seen that the mood is much better in the jewelry and watch area. Uh, having uh, strong management teams uh, like Swatch, but also at the LVMH where they uh, have a watch area with Hublot and Tag Heuer mm -hmm. saying things are better, things okay. are improving, mood is much better. Right, okay, so you mentioned watch, watches, you mentioned uh, jewelry as well, those are the hard luxury goods, right? The soft right. ones are, are the Gucci makers, the clothing, right. the bags, etc, etc. So let me just ask you about segments here. Which segments do you think will, will perform better in 2010? Well, you know, uh, in the second half here and now also up to the uh, fair in Basel, we have been increasing uh, names, uh, positioning names like Tiffany, mm -hmm. like uh, Richemo, like Bulgari. Uh, in the hard luxury area, mm -hmm. they were hit much harder than the <coughs> soft luxury area, which showed a lot of resilience, uh, especially in leather goods. So we still think that you know uh, names like Tiffany will uh, surprise investors very positively. Yeah, that's surprising because uh, Tiffany didn't report results that investors liked recently. In fact, they pretty much disappointed the market. Yeah, uh, I would say that there were some uh, tax uh, issues and also a bit more spending on advertising. Mm -hmm. But if you think what Tiffany is doing now and how the strategy uh, of the management team is uh, laying out for the next uh, two to three years, they're really in a sweet spot. First of all, they, they really have it uh, an easy sale this year if they continue like that. They have uh, not only um, uh, products in the high end, mm -hmm. they also have a lot of products in the affordable area, which uh, works very well in the US, but also in Asia and China. Management said that they're going to open up uh, stores at 8% uh, uh, growth level, mm -hmm. so they, you know, they, they're talking about 20 to 30 stores in the next three years in China, mainland China. Yeah, so maybe the mainland so, Chinese can see more of these blue boxes than these famous blue boxes from Tiffany's. Yeah, I'm very friend. confident about that, and you know, uh, Tiffany is a stock which is trading at uh, 19 times, you know, and going to produce more than 20% EPS growth. Uh, you know, we, we really like it and we, we continue to buy it in okay. weakness. Well, we're going to get a commercial break. When we come back, we'll get more on how to invest in the luxury goods department. Also, take a look at another retailer or supplier to 